it makes a huge difference. And then people, okay, well, is the pump important? Yeah, the pump does contribute to, well, there's a couple things. One, it contributes to the feel of the workout. So if you're trying to develop a muscle and feel it and squeeze it, it's easier to do that when you have a good pump in the muscle. So that's, there's, there's one right there. And I think that's, that can't be overstated. And then there's a, there is a muscle building signal that comes from the pump itself. And this is a little bit debated, but I would think that I, I would say that most bodybuilders would agree that the pump itself does induce some uh, muscle growth. Nonetheless, even if it didn't, the feel of it alone, the improvement in the quality of your workout and your ability to connect to the target muscle, that alone makes a pump uh, worth it. Boom, we're back. All right, here's the giveaway for today. MAPS Anabolic, the program that started it all. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode and go to our new channel, Mind Pump Clips. Subscribe to that, turn on notifications. So do those things. If we like your comment, we will notify you and you have free access to MAPS Anabolic. Again, the program that started it all. Also, we're running a sale all month long. The starter bundle, which includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide is 50% off. And MAPS Split, that's our advanced bodybuilder style workout program, is 50% off. So they're both 50% off. If you're interested, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code MAYSPECIAL for that discount. All right, here comes the show. The three most important components of getting a good pump. Here they are, ready? Water, salt, and carbs. Everything else, largely a waste of time. Those three things are the most important. Do you know when I pieced this together, like um, it was actually not not that long ago. Um, Same. I'm serious. <laughs> it took me a long time. It, 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 it wasn't that long ago. It was uh, getting ready for, you know, when I was just starting to train to get ready to get step into competing, right? And I was uh, I was obviously tracking and manipulating this. So I had never tracked that diligently before and really started to figure out like, holy crap, when I like strategically drink a half a gallon of water, load 60 to 90 grams of carbohydrates before, throw like before, this was before LMNT, throw a little bit of salt in my water. So like, boy, that oh, huge, I mean, better than any supplement I've ever taken on the market. Not even close. Yeah. it's I know, same thing. It's like I used to do, I would do the arginine, the yeah. citrulline, the all the supplements for the better pump that gets promoted so hard it's and then and then i would sometimes get this crazy pump sometimes i wouldn't and yeah it's uh, not that those things don't work those things work yeah. too i mean they, they they have some value to it but boy it doesn't come close to no it's just, like what you just said yeah it's like five percent of the of the impact of just drinking be nice and hydrated oh and yeah it's and salt is a salt, part of it yeah so you know make sure you have that. enough sodium especially if you're an athlete or you train a lot and you sweat a lot you need more sodium than and you do and you don't eat a lot of processed food right you need more sodium than you think water and carbs like do those things either because i work out first thing in the morning so if i do those the night before um and in the morning i'll make sure i have like two big glasses of water at least an hour and a half before my workout and then i'll have lmnt during the workout which has got enough sodium it's like night and day the pump is like night and day just from those things and i could take out all the other pump inducing supplements and blood flow enhancers and all that blah 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 mm. like if i don't have enough water sodium and carbs in my system it doesn't do it doesn't matter and that doesn't cost yeah. you any extra money that's what's no about it doesn't it's like simple it makes a huge difference and then people okay well is the pump important yeah the pump does contribute to well there's a couple things one it contributes to the feel of the workout so if you're trying to develop a muscle and feel it and squeeze it it's easier to do that when you have a good pump in the muscle so that's there's there's one right there and i think that's that yeah. can't be overstated and then there's a, there is a muscle building signal that comes from the pump itself. And this is a little bit debated, but I would think that I, I would say that most bodybuilders would agree that the pump itself does induce some uh, muscle growth. Nonetheless, even if it didn't, the feel of it alone, the improvement in the quality of your workout and your ability to connect to the target muscle, that alone makes a pump uh, worth it. It reminds me of that chocolate milk study a bit. Where, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's like you, you, you want the most perfect protein powder and the yeah. shake and everything. And then uh, they literally did a study with chocolate milk and found like a very similar result. It was the same. Just drinking. Yeah. That was one of the first studies I shared when I turned Instagram on because I thought that was such a funny one. I uh, thought that was so interesting. Yeah. It's like all the all these crazy formulas that we make and we sell for, you know, $40 a jug. It's like, have some chocolate milk. Have a, yeah. <laughs> have a glass. Just <laughs> throw that into the, the bro what? forum, you know, and watch your heads explode. Dude, milk, throw in some Nestle quick and you're boom. 
Yeah, yeah. done. Uh, your your post-workout recovery is done. We just skip over, like, yeah, the meat and potatoes of what you really need to focus dude. on a lot of times because the supplement industry is a marketing machine. Oh, dude. dude, speaking of, like, milk, like, if you can tolerate dairy, you want to talk about one of the best bulking, like, foods out there? Whole milk. It is so effective. Body by cheese, dude. Come it is on. so effective. <laughs> Body <laughs> by cheese. <laughs> Just, <laughs> okay, okay, that's okay, my next video beard. series, dude. <laughs> hey, ah! I'm not making fun of him because if we get a cheese sponsor at some point, like, out, like the cheese, you know, the cheese well, we association. Get, hey, we of get, you know what? And I'm sure it's because you. We just got. We have some again. I should shout them out because they sent it over to us for oh, free. Oh, the time. raw keeper. Yeah, the raw. Yeah. The, the, I took a bunch home, dude. Yeah, yeah I've been, I, I've been, I'm been sure that's because of Justin. Having it over there, yeah. so we obviously have some listeners over that in that company. I don't know what's it. It's, what's the name of the company? Is it just raw? Is that the name of the company? I don't, give them a, I don't know. Yeah. We gotta I'll go, go, I'll go we'll find get, out. Yeah, yeah find yeah, out because I want to give them a shout out. Yeah, yeah, we should give them some yeah, love. But it's really you, good stuff. It, it just made me think of that. I'm pretty sure that it's, I'm sure it's, it's Justin. Justin. Yeah, they didn't send it to me. They're like, I, <laughs> I can't have dairy. Yeah. No, yep. hey, raw milk, raw, whole, like good raw whole milk tastes so much better than the pasteurized, homogenized milk. Oh, yeah. Way they better. get all the vitamins and nutrients, everything they strip out, you know? So, well, what is it? What's the brand there? Raw oh, so farm. Was raw. Raw farm. Okay. Raw farm. Okay. Yeah. Raw farm. Okay. Yeah. Did you know that Shout you can't? Out. Did you know that you can't feed calf? So calves, right? Baby cows. You can't feed them pasteurized, homogenized milk. They actually fail to thrive. They have to have it in raw right. form. You mm -hmm. need all those digestive enzymes that they get rid of when you do that, right? And, and mm -hmm. oh, here's another fact: raw milk doesn't go bad. Raw milk just turns into what like is it? That butter it milk. Butter milk. Butter milk. Sours. Yes. Yeah. They, but yeah. regular milk goes sour and bad. Not when I say regular, the the pasteurized, yeah. homogenized stuff, because they kill all the bacteria, yeah. including the good bacteria. So it just goes bad. Whereas, whereas real good raw milk from healthy cows, it doesn't go bad. It looks so different mm -hmm. though if you're not used to seeing it. It has like this blue and like it's got a blue thick, yellow, yeah, bluish yeah. yellowy. Oh, you gotta shake the it. hell out of it too. And then when you like, so we would used to use like other milk containers and then fill it up. In oh there. yeah, I forgot. You're and like it, you worked. It, with yeah, cows. yeah. So and when you you shake it up and it like it's so thick it like sticks to yeah. the walls. Yeah, yeah. And it's like used a, to drink it right out of the teat. Right? I did. No, I, you didn't. Yeah, you squirt the teat in your face. No, I just squirted in my coffee. Wow. Oh, yeah. Cause I remember I used to remember I used to milk about four o'clock in the morning. So I was, I'd show up with my black coffee and then I'd just get straight from the teeth in the first the first you know, That was delicious. I love it. I love stories like that because you get so many spoiled ass kids now. It's like, <laughs> you know, Adam at four AM. Yeah. Did you ride bike, your bike? Dude, just yeah. for like, oh, a, that's like the, a couple that, miles. That's the bad story. Like I had a yeah. I had a car most of the time to take me to work. It was that was when my parents grounded me from my car. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's a not every day that I ride my bike. Right, whatever. You but, drove at four AM before school. Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta dress it up though. Like it was snowing. Yeah. yeah. It was like twenty. I mean, it wasn't away. that cra what's crazy was the war zone. I didn't I think exactly. it was actually crazy at all as a kid um, because so my senior year, um, I had enough units to graduate early. So instead of trying to like graduate early, all I did was carve off a bunch of um, time. So I, I took my first period off and my last period off. So, so school work. started. Yeah. So I could work more. So school started later for me and then uh, school ended early, which worked perfect for the milking schedule because you milk at four and four. What were your grades in high school? Did you get good grades? Um, most of the time I was, a, I was honor roll. So I, I think I averaged though at the end, like if you took all four years yeah. under three Oh, okay. but cause I had some, I had some times where I fucked off for a little bit, mm -hmm. but I was, you, cause for basketball, you had to, and our, well, basketball, you had to have over a 2.5, but my parents, the rule was play sports. I had to have a three Oh, got it. So I carry, always carried a three Oh, if I was in sports every once in a while, I'd slack off, maybe get a couple of seasons, stuff like that. And then I get in trouble or grounded and then I'd get them back what up. What about you, Justin? Did you get good grades? Pretty similar. Yeah. On a roll. And then, uh, it was my senior year. I think it was, uh, organic chemistry or oh. chemistry. Yeah. And it was like, I, I had my wisdom teeth removed and like, I missed all these labs and the guy never let me, uh, complete the labs what and make jerk. them up. And I got a D in that class. And I was like, ah, yeah. I remember just raging. Did what you say that was chemistry? Yeah. Chemistry was my only D. Really? Yeah. yeah. So I hated I, chemistry. So I, so he, he loved girls too, which was oh, very obvious. Bro, I hate that. Yeah. You ever dude, see those teachers that would do kind gross. of gross? Yeah. Oh man. Terrible. Yeah, I, I would put him on blast if he was still alive. <laughs> oh, he died? Yeah, he died. Did you kill him? Oh. 
maybe. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> no. You know no, what? I re- my biggest memory of chemistry class, which yeah. is core, probably maybe has to do with me getting a D then, right? Uh, is this was, you remember when the, you know, it, our, we used to, they used to roll out the, the TVs that were strapped yeah. to the, you know, yeah. right? That's usually a good time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was. And then I found a universal remote. Oh, yeah. So I used it. to always <laughs> fucking change the channel and shit like that. So I was always on cops. Yeah, yeah. yeah, dude. All I remember from chemistry was, what was that thing called an R? auger block they're like do not eat this it will kill you what like, an auger block. is that what it's called it's like this little gel looking thing that you would use in experiments hmm. maybe i'm making this up did i dream this up doug look this up i, I don't know, know but i, I never, never heard of that i remember the sparky. teacher being like never eat this this will kill you and i remember being like oh, <laughs> you shit. probably shouldn't eat anything really <laughs> like, maybe i should class. taste it yeah. <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna sprinkle this in that guy's water i hate that guy no that was the one i told you guys like we had um did i just make that the up, experiment where you i don't know exchange like uh electricity like everybody holds oh, hands yeah, yeah. together, right? And then, so of course, because me and my friends are crazy and stupid, like reduced it down to just me and my buddy, yeah. like holding this thing and then seeing how long we could go. We went long. <laughs> and when I was done, it was like, it fried us. Like it was bad. <laughs> I like, found it. Agar, yeah, A G A R is a jelly like substance consisting of polysaccharides obtained from the cell walls of some species of red algae, primarily. From and I don't know how to say that I word. I can't believe you remember that. I just remember, you know what I remember about it? That yeah. the, trying to eat it, and your teacher saying no. No, he's like, don't put, don't, don't, don't put this in your mouth. And I remember being like, that's a weird thing to like. We're we're, we're seniors. <laughs> we're not gonna put any of this in our mouth. What was your guys' favorite and least favorite class in high school? So I, this is funny because yesterday my son was like yeah. telling me about these debates he's having in class. He goes to a great school, has, loves his teachers. He's super inspired sometimes. Yeah, and I get I jealous because I hate, my, I was so unmemorable. I hated school. Yeah. Not not because it was bad, but it was boring and unmemorable. No, no and passion. It was dumb. And I got probably a 3.0 or something. And, and really that was just because I was sharp. So I could show up and pass a test if I needed to and do my homework the pre-read before. It was like I tried. But my son really loves school, and I'm so jealous. I had one teacher. I had Mr. Curry. He was psychology, and I liked him because he let us- You had psychology in high school? I did. It was an elective. Oh. And I liked it because we sat in class and debated. Hmm. And I I got inspired. It felt like, you know, like it was fun. And he he would pick these topics, and then you had to argue one side of it, and then you had to argue the other side of it, which really was fun for me. And I used to get up in the front of class. I loved psychology, but I didn't get that that. until junior college. We didn't have psychology in our high school What was your elective in high school? Um, I did ceramics. I did, um, you were well, in the cuts, right? well, you were also, when you were, when you were an athlete, you could take, uh, one of the periods uh, as an elective. So I always had like, yeah, whatever. so I had like a gym elective always. Yeah. That's a good question. I'm trying to remember all, I don't remember all my electives. My electives wasn't my favorite. The math was yeah. my favorite class. I liked math. My electives were always revolved around like art stuff. Like, so my favorite class forever was cartooning. <laughs> <laughs> that's a class. It was amazing. Dude. Cartooning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I drew a bunch of flip books and like a bunch of inappropriate art. That, yeah, I know the, what you teacher drew, loved. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the helicopter. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all that stuff, dude. Yeah. That's my jam. Okay, so that was your favorite. Yeah, what? and then um, I mean, I didn't like math because a- after algebra and, and it got into like algebra two and all that, I was like, I'm done. Like yeah. this is all theoretical you know, nonsense. So, what was your least favorite? I hated math, but you know why? It's the hardest class to bullshit. So I used to bullshit all my classes. <laughs> it's true. Is, you know what? That's my exact reason why I liked it. I liked it because there was like two plus two was always four. Yeah. You, you know can't just saying? show up and be like, well, yeah. well no, like, because English I, and, and I just felt like it's like, it was so gray. No, here know? was my, this was my, my, this was literally I my MO. English. My MO was whatever class I took, the teacher would typically give us the opportunity to do or the option, which no kid ever took. Nobody wants to do this. You could either take the test or you could go up to the front of the class and present your whatever to the whole class. Nobody kid, nobody kid, no kid wants to do that. No. I loved it because I could go to the front of the class BS. and I could make, and the teacher was always like, I, I get applause. <laughs> in math, you can't yeah, do you that. If you, master's in BS. If yeah, you B- miss a yeah. bunch of classes in math, you're screwed. Yeah, yeah. No. You got to know you what You either happened. know how to do it or you know how to do it. Yeah, That's so what, I- that, Which I, is why I liked it. I no, like that. So, I Doug, what about you? What was your, what was your least favorite? What was your favorite? <clears throat> uh, least favorite was physics. Oh. I did not like physics, mm. even though it's got some practical applications. It was just hard. I liked mm-hmm. physics. I liked physics. Um, yeah. My favorite class was actually a an essay class I took. So I was lucky. I took an advanced class. Uh, the The teacher was actually a doctor. He was a like a professor. Essentially, this guy was very very strict, but he helped me a lot with my writing. And uh, he was brutal when it came to grading. 
Oh, wow. But he demanded a lot out of us. And so I really improved my writing a lot. So by the time I got to the university, uh, I was actually. Oh, that's pretty, why you're the yeah. grammar Nazi out of all of us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You're the yeah. best with he that. Is, he's, yeah. yeah. yeah interestingly, this guy had two different colored eyes. Oh, his Dr. Gage was his name. Wow. He had two different colored eyes. Sounds like an X Men. Yeah, he was. He was kind of, <laughs> he, he was bald. He was very, very interesting guy. Yeah, but uh, he taught me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of, of hypnotic trance, speaking of school and stuff, I, I, I really, it's funny. I was uh, on the way here. I was listening to a podcast. They were talking about the student loan bubble and the issue or whatever. And uh, man, kids just don't understand debt. They don't understand value. And they get into these, these loans because they've been sold this like, an education means you're going to be successful no matter what you learn. And it's okay to take out all this debt. And so, you know, these guys were debating about the student loan bubble and what we're going to do about it. And obviously right now it's a, it's a ploy to, to, to get votes, which is what they typically do right before some kind of election. But if you want to fix that system, all you got to do, and this will totally fix it, is, is make it a completely market-based loan system. That's it. Because then what happens is banks, they have to take the risk of the loan. And what they'll do to the student is they'll say, oh, you want a loan? What are you going to study? Yeah. What are your grades? And then they'll say, okay, you yeah, want to learn art history? Put some Sorry, accountability you can't, you can't take a hundred thousand dollar Harvard loan for art history. Yeah, oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh oh oh, you know, liberal arts. Well, we're going to give you a thousand bucks because that's about as much as you'll be able to pay us back. Oh, you want to do you know medicine? All right, a little bit more, and you got good grades. Or, and that's the problem is that these loans are all federally backed, so it's a bunch of free, easy money. Of course, school. I mean, imagine if they did this with cars. Imagine if car loans were guaranteed by the federal government. There would nobody would be driving a Honda. Everybody would be driving BMWs and Mercedes because yeah. it'd be a bunch of free money. So you have all these kids now who have all these degrees that are worthless. And if they're like, I can't pay back my loan. Well, yeah, you got a degree in something that's not it's not valuable in the market. And especially today, you want to learn something that's not valuable. You don't need to get a loan and for and it. And Go learn it. You can learn it on yeah. YouTube. And in their defense, available. you're at a you're you're at an age. I mean, what did you know at 17 years old, especially related to stuff like that? So there's no education around it. Listen, for them, you're so. 18. First of all, most of them get at 18. 18 years old. You're old enough to go to war. You're old enough to go to a strip club, and you're old enough to vote. So unless we change all those laws, you're old enough to take on the responsibility of a loan. Bottom you, line, or you, you can't vote. You, if you, you can't are, take a loan, then don't you vote. You are, but then there's no there's no teach. And I'm, I'm not, by the way, I'm not def defending at all. I do not believe in the bailing all them out. But I mean, in their defense, that there was no there's no communication around that. What you're explaining right now is like there's there's none of that. It's just. What what it, what is communicated to kids that are yeah. you know it's twelve? Any degree is worth it. Well, yeah, it's yeah. how important having a degree is, and all this all the stats around how much more money you potentially make yeah. by having a degree. So there's this massive push in that direction, but not a lot of conversation around the things that you're saying right now. And so, in their defense, I mean, I did a lot of stupid stuff as as a teenage kid. Yeah. When you're a teenage kid, getting taking a loan out to go get a four year degree, you don't think is potentially a stupid thing. You think that's probably making a smart decision. Like right. I'm thinking about my and that's future. why and the mm -hmm. and that's why the market it, it needs to have no government interference because the market will figure that out. You're a kid. You're right. You might be like, well, I want money. Well, the, then the, the banks are going to say, sorry. I mean, what you want to learn is is you're not going to be able to pay us back, so we can't give you this loan. If you learn something else and you show us your grades or whatever, then we can maybe do some kind of like uh, you know salary sharing or whatever. Market will figure it out, but what we did is we guaranteed these loans, which of course because this the this banks huge are incentivized bubble. to do it because uh -huh. it's protected. So of totally, course of course, they're going. Oh, to. it's great. This conversation I have with my son. We're talking because obviously he's a junior, gets good grades, wants to go to college, and we sit. I sit down with him and I say, depending on what you want to learn and where you're going to go to school, we're going to figure out the market viability and whether or not debt will be worth it or not. Because you're an adult, you have to make these decisions. Dad's not going to sit here and pay for everything just because you want to have a college experience. We have to figure this out and say what, because that is a valuable lesson. What, otherwise, you graduate and you're like, oh, I don't know how to figure this out. And you end up doing all kinds of crazy stuff with with money and debt. So very important lesson to learn, I think. Yeah, yeah I definitely. think there just hasn't been that conversation enough of like, this needs to go somewhere. It's not just you get to go to college, have the experience and all that. Like this is preparing you for the real world. And like, are you thinking in that direction about like your next steps uh, from yeah. there? Not just like holding time. Was it the All In podcast you were listening? Yeah, it, is that, what that did you finish that? Did Almost. You, did you get to the part where he, he talks about what his prediction of what? I, no, that's towards the end, isn't it? Yeah. It okay, is, such uh, a good. I mean, such a good episode. Yeah, it you is. Know, I've had to break it up uh, just because I've I've been so busy, but uh, really, really good. Actually, I did want to tell you guys. Remember how I told you guys I found the last Rambo 
on Netflix. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, dude. So they, the, this is the brand new version because I know he had like like First Blood or Last this Blood. This is Last Blood. Okay. 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 But it's the Last Blood. <laughs> it's Last. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, they went way too far. Like way <laughs> too far. In what direction? What do you mean? Bro, it's like, oh, I had I turned it off. So I'll oh, wait, so because they're always us, gory. Right? So when you like told us before it, you hadn't finished it yet. No, I had only 30 minutes in. Oh. And, and you were that, selling it that hard? Well, because it's God, you're such a sucker. I'm a huge fan of Sylvester such Sloan. Such a sucker. This guy's 30 Listen, minutes in selling I'm a the show. huge yeah. fan of Sylvester Sloan. What I was selling was that he was like <laughs> The way he yeah. looks at 70 whatever <laughs> years old, right? Don't right. backpedal now. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the truth. Hey, listen, you like some <laughs> shitty ass movies. <laughs> I don't know. Dude. Don't, don't, don't even say no, it. Don't. You like some we'll shitty We'll put this to a vote. <laughs> well, anyway, listen. Uh, uh, they, go too, polls. they go too far. So here's a spoiler alert if you're planning on watching it, which I don't recommend. His niece, who he ends up raising, so it's kind of like his daughter, she gets kidnapped by this Mexican. Uh, the cartel or cartel that b gets girls. So this is where it starts oh, to so get. This is getting traffic, bro. It goes so far, wow. bro. Okay, they kidnap her, then they drug her, and in this she's getting like raped and like the guy cuts her face. And I'm watching this and I'm Good like, Lord, I'm like, bro, like this is going. This may hurt my heart. Super she's like, graphic. bro, she gets killed. She eventually dies, and then Rambo goes ape shit and decapitates people. And <laughs> wow! I'm like, oh, I can't get over the fact that she got killed. He's though. a part wow. of those, right? Not not just the acting yeah. portion, but he helps write them, right? Or yeah. he helps produce them. I think so. Yeah. So he has. A lot it just goes so far. Then he yeah. sets up like, like these crazy. these crazy booby traps <laughs> to to get the cartel to come after him. And the way he kills everybody is just so <laughs> so extreme, so dude. gruesome, like. Sticks through the brain and like just crazy. Sounds awesome, actually. But it made me sad because she died, dude. And I was like, uh, you know, I have no, kids, dude. Yeah, I couldn't watch that part, so uh, I had to turn it off. Uh, Rambo uh, couldn't yeah. save her, dude. Yeah, that's, so don't, that's not the way to end the series. Don't watch it. But really, First really Blood is great. First Blood's good. That's yeah. a great. So movie. how many total are there now? How many of them? Does I it, have no idea. At least you, four or five, maybe, maybe more. Hey, remember John the one? Rambo. Hey, remember the one that jumped the shark where he was? I don't remember where he was. He was Afghanistan, in some maybe. Yes. No. I yeah. think it was Afghanistan where he shoots the, he shoots an, an arrow oh, at, at a helicopter blows it up. Oh, yeah. It's got, <laughs> it's got a, no, I think a that's Vietnam editor. or someplace. Yeah, yeah that, see, that reminds me of the hot shots. Yeah, Charlie part Sheen. Yes, I yeah. get those mixed up all the time now because it's like... That actually happened in a Rambo. <laughs> he shot a helicopter. He's yeah. like standing on the top of a cliff and, a, and like yeah. one of those like badass helicopters I think that's what they were up. making. I think yeah, they, they had like a that. chicken that yeah. they're like shooting. And, and it yeah. blows up the helicopter, dude. Hilarious. Yeah, anyway, fun. all right. So I'll, I'll I'll take a fun turn here. Last night I, I had dinner at. Um, you guys ever go to those? Uh, what are they called? Uh, teppanyaki is that what it's called in Japan? Where they cook food on the huge, uh, like metal like plate or Benihana whatever, like a Benihana, style. right? So there's one over here called Kyoto Palace. A lot of fun. We hadn't been there in a while, and I haven't taken Aurelius ever there. And he's at the age now. I don't know if Max is like this, where going out to eat is just not worth it because after about five minutes, he doesn't want to sit still. Mm. You got to occupy him and say, like, oh, why do we do this? Well, we should just stay at home. Well, I'm like, maybe this will be different, right? And it, dude, he was so enthralled. Yeah, He's watching cool. the dude like flip the food and cut the whatever. And I'm like, this is where we're coming from dinner because <laughs> we actually get to sit down for 40 There's minutes. entertainment for him. Yeah. yeah, dude. So it was it was a lot of fun. Watching, we were, watching you know, we were really lucky with that actually, or at least so far, knock on wood, right? Because uh, everybody told me that like, oh. You're like an angel child. Is yeah, what you're uh, well, you know, I mean, we'll see because there's, you know, it's still early, right? But. I like to think that we actually had a really cool moment um, yesterday. Katrina, she took uh, she took him to school. He hasn't been because he was sick for like the last week, right? So anytime that he's taking a break from the his routine, it's always a little. There's like a little bit of nervousness around us. So like, oh, let's see, he's been out of his routine. Sure. Let's see if he's going to be okay. And she said she was so happy because he like he jumped out of the car and like went straight running in running into class and. I guess uh, it's like a two-story place, and so one of the teachers from above saw him come in, and she came out, and then ran downstairs, and Maximus, and got down. And he comes running up and gives her a big old hug, and she's like, "Oh, so sweet." She goes, "Oh, I love him." She goes, "He's not even in my class, but I come down here whenever I oh. see him, so that because he's such a lover." I bet you felt so proud. Oh yeah, she's like, "He's such a lover, and he plays so good, and stuff like that." And I'm like, "Ah, it's cool." Because you want, I want to believe, right? You or at least you don't want to have the terror kid. That the well, and like. and you also want to believe that the 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 thing, the little things that that Katrina and I are trying to be mindful of are starting to pay off, or that will manifest into your child, right? Like you never know because you always hear those stories, right? Of parents that were like great parents, and then they had this fucking terrible kid, right? That's just, <laughs> just really like this. I know it scares the shit out of me. It, well, it does. It worries me because people say that like, oh, you could do all you want trying to do all these things, and you never know what you're gonna get, right? Or whatever. So. 
of course, that's always in the back of your mind, but yet you're doing all these little things, trying to put in routines and habits. And, you know, we're very careful the way we communicate around him. We're like you guys, we're very, very touchy feely. So he gets a lot of love, a lot of like, he's never heard Katrina and I yell. He's ne- none of that stuff. Right. So I, I want to believe that's going to turn this kid into this like, like very calm and chill and loving yeah. type of I, I, It's going to have a huge impact for sure. Yeah. I, I, have you guys ever watched, if you ever want to get this, just scared? Watch Intervention. You ever watch Intervention? Mm-mm. Oh my god! I hate god. that show. Oh, it's so terrible. It's yeah. like they'll have like it's about um, somebody who's really struggling with addiction, like terrible, like either heroin or, or is depressing or alcohol is or something, right? And it's just and these and you can see these people are just they're just terrible, either homeless or they're going to kill themselves. And then the family organizes an intervention to try to save their life. But a part of the show is they go back. And show family photos and videos right. of them when these they were sweet kids. little kids, and they're know, just these happy yeah. little kids, oh, and, and it's like it's always like one yeah, thing. Like that's I, what breaks you. You're oh. just like, oh god, how they turn into this? Yeah, and it's always one thing. Like, oh, and then my dad died, or my sibling died, or mom and dad got divorced, or something like that. Like one thing, yeah. Yeah. and then they got on this path of it scares the sh- crap out of me. Like I watch that, and I, it's, I'm like, oh my god, I couldn't. Like, what would I do if yeah. that was you know if that was my kid? Don't watch that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, don't watch I mean, you you, you you you. I think every parent probably thinks about this, right? At least if you're a parent that cares and you're trying and yeah. you're, you're trying to uh, like create this like. You know, and by no means am I trying to put my son in a bubble or overprotect him and things like that, but just give him a a a, a house full of love. Be very conscious of the mm-hmm. conversations and the, uh, the 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 way we are around each other and in front of him. Like, you know, so yeah. So- the study the the studies that I've read, um, and I'm by no means an expert on this, but the studies I've read show that um, high love and discipline. So love and discipline. Discipline meaning structure. When those two um, are present, you have the best outcomes. When you have a lot of love and not any discipline, you still get generally good outcomes, but it's not, it's a lot more rocky. When you have a lot of discipline with no love, you get some really bad outcomes. So these are the households with no love, but mom and dad are like, or dad is just super authoritarian. Yes. Then you get really bad outcomes. (laughs) Yeah. It's funny. You say it's a, uh, you know, one of the structures or discipline was like, you know, when it's bedtime, it's bedtime. We don't mess around. And Katrina's like uh, putting him down. She goes, you know, he's getting to this place where he's, he's smart too, where he's starting to learn how to work mom and dad really well. And he knows that mom is just a sucker for the love and and stuff like that. And he, he was, she was getting, he was getting up and down with her. Like she's supposed to be putting him down. And you know, that normally only takes a f- 10 minutes at best. And sometimes she'd be in there for like 30 minutes or so. And she comes down afterwards. I'm like, Hey, what was it? Okay. What happened? She's like little shit, man. He just kept getting up and down and like not listening to me. And and I'm telling him it's Max, it's bedtime. Max is bedtime. You know this. And, and then she goes, finally, I like use my stern voice, like Maximus, it's time for bed now. And he comes over and he walks over to her kite crawls over to her mommy and then hugs her. <laughs> <laughs> she's like little shit you know she's yeah. it works just, just as i start to get a little frustrated with him stuff like that he just melts her, I, you know it yeah. worked. i told you guys when i figured that out as a kid i was uh my mom and she'd get really mad you know and she's got four kids we're all crazy or whatever and you know this is old school time mom she had the wooden spoon the whole deal and i got when i got old enough to like restrain her i would hug her and she would get so mad but then i kiss her and after about 30 seconds, no matter how mad she was, she yeah. couldn't be mad anymore. So I would do this. And then she would tell me, like, later on, like, don't do that anymore to me. I'm like, all right, mom. But I would always do it. She'd get mad. I'd hold her. And she'd get so pissed off. And then, nah, 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 nah. And then so she wouldn't be mad anymore, no matter what. That's so great. I know. Kids yeah. are smart, dude. Kids are really smart. All right. So uh, cool study I read on um, collagen protein, which is kind of interesting. So we know that when your protein intake is really high, the protein sources don't matter as much, right? So yeah. if you're eating one gram of protein per pound of body weight, whether your protein is coming from plant or animal or what kind of animal, it doesn't make that big of a difference. But when your protein intake is lower than the ideal like high amount, then it actually starts to make a difference. And the reason why I'm communicating this is because of all the people I ever trained and worked with, You know, let me ask you guys, what percentage of the people you ever worked with actually ate the upper limit or the limit of of protein less than twenty yeah. percent. Yeah, real so, slow. So I'm talking to most people right now. So so because I know we always say high protein, then it doesn't matter so much. But most people aren't going to hit those targets. So then the protein sources start to matter. Collagen protein. I read in this study. I'm going to read to you guys uh, kind of some of what they found um, in this particular study. So 
when they so they did this with lifters and they gave them collagen protein as a, a supplement. And what they found in this is they saw a significant increase in fat free mass compared with the placebo group. So in other words, they had more lean body mass as a result. But the kind of lean body mass that they built was known as this integrative building material known as extracellular matrix material, ECM. So ECM coats skeletal muscle and it accounts for 1% to 10% of muscle mass. And they, at first they thought it was a separate structure that provides mechanical support for force transmission, but now they find that actually what it is is that muscle cells attach to and connect with the ECM and it pro provides a permissive environment for the development of muscle. So in other words, increasing ECM improves the muscle, the, the general muscle building environment. And collagen protein hmm. does this specifically more than other kinds of protein. So it provides it the very specific type of nutrients yes. for it to well, foster growth? Well, it's the glycine and proline and other uh, amino acids that are high in collagen. Can I say are, something? That are not high in the other types, yes. That sounds like a bunch of bullshit. No, it's it, we mean, it's, 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 it, it just it sounds like such a leap. Like it sounds so crazy to no, me. Well, and I mean they they found it in the study. They actually did muscle biopsies and saw that this is what it did. And I'm assuming they compared it then to whey and other so other sources of protein. It, it, yes, and so uh, it's a it's a unique effect that you get from collagen, which is very interesting. Hmm. So I know hmm. a lot of times we hear that collagen may be inferior to whey. It's different. They used to throw it away. It's different. I know. It used to be trash. I know. That's the the funny part to me. And that's why I have such a hard time jumping on the collagen bandwagon is because it's for year, for decades, that part of the part of it, they just throw away. Well, so I've experimented with it because I dairy protein messes me up. I can have plant protein, but if I'm if my gut is off, even a lot of plant proteins sometimes mm. collagen like like bone broth protein never messes. That's like the most easy digestible protein. Like Paleo Valley has this bone broth protein that has no flavor, no color, nothing. Literally, it's bone yeah, broth. Yeah, I use that every protein. now and then. That and the uh, organ complex quite okay. a bit. Yeah, just because you know from the nutrients, separate nutrients, and I think there is something to. Uh, you know, different types of, of nutrient sources. Like, it, yep. so uh, again, like it's probably at this point, like it's hard to define, but like, if you see a study like that, oh, that's interesting that it provides that unique uh, material for your body to, 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 to have that kind of tissue. Yeah. So, I mean, I use it a lot because it's so easy to digest. And if I'm missing my protein targets and I'm already, except for me, I'd have to eat about 200 grams of protein. It's a lot of protein. Yeah. And let's say I miss it by like 60 grams, which, which often happens, 60 or 70 grams. 60 to 70 grams of protein powder can sometimes mess me up. But, it's, but the bone broth protein doesn't. It's like water. Like yeah. I, could drink, I could drink 100 grams of that and it won't bother me. So oftentimes I'll use it. And I do notice um, interesting effects from it, but mainly I notice uh, nails and skin. But this was an interesting study because I, I, I was doing more reading. And I'm like, you know, I wonder if there's a unique – benefit to it aside from the skin and nails and hair thing that we always hear. Yeah. And it was this one. It's right always here. beauty where they really like market and push. Yeah. yeah so collagen. it, like, it creates, essentially it, it contributes to this the ECM, which contributes to the environment to encourage muscle growth. So indirectly it's got this muscle, you know, building signaling process, which is kind of the selling point for hmm. me or the only reason why you'd ever catch me even use it is because the point you made about the, the digestibility. Well, that, and it's like tasteless. Yeah. yeah. It's like, so it mixes really, if you're, if you're trying to add it to something and you don't want, because sometimes you're making something and you have a vanilla or a chocolate flavor protein yeah. powder, whether it doesn't matter if it's vegan or it's whey and you add it in and it just changes the taste, the texture of that. But it's so like, but like, there's nothing in it and it's so like refined it's like even different the way yeah. it, like the like it's not as like powdery and thick it's not like and, chalky yeah. yeah and so it mixes really well mm -hmm. into some stuff to where you can't taste the flavor of it so if i were to use it it would be something for those yeah, reasons little hack too i'll take it and i'll put like 50 60 grams and then i'll throw in some psyllium husk uh like really finely ground powder so it adds the fiber and it's like fiber and protein. And it's like mm. the best, it's literally, aside from certain foods, it's the easiest digestible thing. Like for me, and I have like, you guys know this, I have issues with with gut health sometimes. If I drink that, it's like uh, like miracle grow for my gut. It's mm. easy. It's really easy. Mm. Yeah. So it works, you know, really well. Mm -hmm. Nice. Anyway, more studies. Yeah. Read a study on flirting, which is kind of cool. <laughs> and a random, right? Cool. They were talking about flirting techniques that actually work. And universal flirting techniques. And they found there was one with men 
that was effective across the board. And then there was one with women that was effective across the board. Oh, really? You guys want to guess what they are? And they're connected somehow. They're actually kind oh, of Oh, interesting. Hmm, so what do you think the flirting this. technique, if you're a guy and you want to flirt with a girl and you want to, do you want to have a high chance of success that she's going to receive it positively? Yeah. What, what do you do? Compliment I or contact. smile or hair. Or it's what? Smile or yeah, hair? It's like yeah. compliments. It's, yeah. I mean, it's uh, uh, easy. So that close, that was, I think, second or third. Oh, yeah. Okay. There, and I, once I say it, you guys are going to be like, duh. Make them laugh. Oh yeah. 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 So yeah. so because that's actually the like the number one uh, attribute that that women would say like sense they, of humor. Yeah, sense of humor, yeah. right? Hmm. Yeah, and it's funny because if you're watching your girl talk to a guy, and you know she's smiling, you might be like, eh, I don't know if I'm a little insecure. He about starts that. laughing. She starts laughing. Oh, that's yeah. right. Come here, honey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got to go over here real quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's so funny. All right, let's go. We got to go home. Yeah, we got to go. Yeah. We can't have any. Competition He's not that funny. Here. Yeah. He's not yeah. that funny. No, he's not funny. Oh, anyway, he still that does irritates jokes. me probably the most. You know, what? if you know, someone makes girl, your wife laugh. Yes. <laughs> and it's like that wasn't funny. <laughs> Why are you laughing at that? You know, it's like it's a courtesy laugh. You know, I'm saying, like, calm down with that a little bit. <laughs> you give him a lot of false confidence. You know what I mean? I got to kind of coach her a little bit. So like to, that. The, to that point, I actually think that's like one of the biggest dead giveaways though. Like when a girl does like a guy, like, so if it's a girlfriend of mine or yeah. something like that, and I see the way she's like laughing at everything he says. Like, oh, and, and then so the hand okay. on the like, shoulder. She's so into him. Like that wasn't even funny at all. She's you laughing. just hit the nail yes, on the head. Dude. Okay. That's the, that's the universal flirting technique good. from women that works, which is to laugh at the uh, guy's jokes uh, or attempts. Uh, Son yeah. of a bitch. How funny is that? Uh, yeah. So the guy make him laugh. That's like it's so obvious now that you, and the girl you is say to it. laugh. But now you say it, like you, you, everyone has been in a situation where you experience that. Totally. Worrisome. And again, like I mean, we're in our forties. I think when you're in your twenties as a guy, you, you don't know how to read signals as well. Yeah. Maybe instinctually a little bit, but as you get older, you really it's like obvious. Yeah. Yeah, dude. My girl's laughing at some dude. Thinks he's dude, hilarious. I'm like, wait a minute. This reminds me. <laughs> so we were at like a, a back to school night or. Whatever and going around and Everett was introducing us to his friends and we're meeting like parents and whatnot. And there's this one lady, like, like God bless her. Like she was trying, but like was like really socially awkward, I guess. But like she, somebody would say something and she would laugh like hysterically. And, we're, and me and Corey were like, uh, like it wasn't that funny. And she just like, keep going. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and like, I'm like, Trying to find, uh, I, I saw ever. I'm like, oh, I gotta go. I gotta go check out the classroom, and I found a way to like escape. But it was just like one of those weird things where you're like, ah, like I don't know. There might be something wrong with you. Uh, was she, she laughing at nervous. the stuff you yeah. were saying, or somebody else that was saying? Somebody else was saying. Uh, like there was a couple of us together, and like somebody said something. It was it, you know everybody there was just kind of like, hey. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's you know, it the, can go south. You know, one of the yeah, what the, do you think? That, so okay, you know, I always love to hear your opinion because you always love to tie everything back to evolution. evolution. Yeah. So what do you think is the, the the evolutionary reasons for women being so attracted to sense of humor? So the theory, the prevailing theory around that is that a man who has a really, you know, quote unquote, good sense of humor and makes people laugh probably has a high status in the tribe. So if you have that kind of charisma where people like to laugh at what you're saying and listen to what you're saying – you probably have high status, therefore you could provide more security and more safety and that kind of stuff. So I've read stuff on similar to that where women will probably perceive well endowed, women yeah. will <laughs> perceive another man significantly more attractive if if other women are, are with him or like that's him. True. Or, yeah. mm, that's so true. Yeah, that's true. So if you're a taken taken dude, or you're, there's women that are because like there's you. something about you. Why yeah. do they, all these women like you? There right. must be something automatically. About she may have looked at you and been like, oh, he's like a six. But then because you got these girls that are around you, talking to you like you're an eight now. You know they've done See, studies on that. Yeah. That, yeah. That, no, I've read. That's what that reminds me of. Like, uh, so we used to go when I was single. We would we would take some of our girlfriends that were just completely platonic, but like were good looking, mm -hmm. and you would go in with like two girls that were really good looking. And then you'd like sort of disperse. And then that was like so easy. Yep. That's Katrina and Everett's relationship. Oh yeah. 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 So, you know, her it's best like they friend worked Everett, together. She, she's the wingman. Yeah. Oh, she wow. was like, yeah. And that's why they, they became so tight was after like, I mean, started in high school because they go all the way back to even like elementary school. But you know, she, he would take her all the time because she was the wingman. Well, well, when, so when my oldest, yeah, your best wingman's a girl. Uh, when my oldest was, uh, so he's 16 now. So when he was just a little guy, a year or two old, He's got two uncles that, you know, so my brother and my, you know, my brother-in-law, they were, they're, they're younger than me. So they were like in their early twenties, uh, when he was born, I think early twenties, late teens. And they would, 
and they're good, great guys, great uncles or whatever, but they take them to the park and they come back and my brother would be like, or my brother-in-law, both of them will say this to be like, dude, taking a baby for a walk in the park. I've never had so many girls talk to me before. <laughs> They're like, this is the best way to meet yeah, girls. That or a puppy, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Did that show up on that at all? Like no, bring it no. okay. Cause no. that's like a total like dude. Hat. Oh, you're a lock. If you got you got a yeah. puppy and you tell jokes, oh my we god. We know what you're doing. Is your guy walking by and like and your guy has a puppy and you're out at the beach? Yeah. Like yeah. you're yeah. fishing. All you need yeah. next is an instrument. Play an instrument, forget about it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh my god. Bust out a saxophone. Oh club. man. <laughs> It all depends on the instrument. Don't bring out a flute. <laughs> that was so annoying in college. Those guys would be out like trying to woo all the girls with their stupid Dave Matthews like oh, uh, songs and their guitars. I, just, I wanted to go full Animal House and just take and smash it over their head. <laughs> Jesus wow. Christ, bro. Wow. <laughs> just so Calm much. down, tiny beard. I'm just dude. saying, dude. <laughs> don't, like, don't push like, him, Adam. <laughs> like, bro, like, it's so like corny and obnoxious. Yeah. Stop it. Because you know what they're doing. So. Yeah, well, yeah, but it's, again, and it's just, it makes my skin crawl, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like those guys that are like, and you know, there's some people that are really like this, but you never seen those guys and it's like, I just really value and respect women. And I really, you know, this, I really think we should fight for it. It's like, all right, dude. Like, okay, the hardcore, you, you couldn't pick I'm up the girls. hardcore feminist, dude. Yeah. yeah, but you know, like overdoing it. You <laughs> yeah, know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, bro. Like, yeah. you found an angle because you, yeah. you couldn't find the other angles didn't work because you're not alpha <laughs> enough. So now you have to do this this angle over here. Yeah. Like, come on. Guys watching know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, you know, everyone's you had that friend for sure. Yeah. 100%. So, you guys remember that study I, I talked about where um, they did a bit, a huge survey on people who use uh, cannabis. It to work out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the reason why it was such a cool study was because none of the people believed it made them stronger or faster, which is true. Studies will show that. But they all thought it improved the psychological effect and the connection to the workout, right? Which I, I, I thought, that's fascinating. It actually kind of makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So you can get, and, and this it's not cannabis, but Ned is our hemp oil, but it's really, you feel it when you take it. So this is why we work with them. I've tried other CBD, you take it. It's like, did I take anything? Ned, you actually feel. So I've actually done this where I take the Ned before a stretching slash mobility session mm -hmm. because those mm -hmm. sessions require, for me at least, more calm, connection, relaxation. It's not like when I lift where I have caffeine and I'm angry. I can't do that when I do mobility and stretching. So I tried it. I took it about an hour and 20 minutes before. I was just going to ask you, how long is it? About an hour, hour and 20 minutes before. Oh, that long, huh? And I took a decent dose of the hemp oil. So I used a strong one. Mm -hmm. And the best stretching mobility set. The best. Like, yeah, that I was 1500 able to, one is potent. Yes. I, I, that's a good idea because the psychoactive version of that is like... Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I like it, It's it, but it wouldn't be something I'd want to repeat all the time. No. Something like that. If I know I'm having like a nice, calm, like kind of restorative day, like to do a uh, Ned drops would be a way Dude, better. Dude, it's so hard to get me to do an hour of mobility and stretching. It just yeah. is 15, 20 minutes. And I'm like, it's hard to get you to sit in a meeting for five minutes. That's true. So <laughs> it, drop some Ned. And, uh, yeah. I know. I've got to a point now where seat. I actually, I'm like, you know what? I've recorded him sleeping in these meetings so much that I'm not going to do it oh, anymore. I'm just so like, hard. <laughs> so, so, it's, hey, it's a problem. Dude, I feel bad about it. You guys yeah. make fun of me all the time. But no, I did it. I took it and, and I got the, obviously, you know, you guys have taken that. You, you feel really chill and kind of relaxed and yeah. a, little oh, yeah. bit, a little bit of euphoria. And then I would get into a stretch that normally is just, uh, it's hard to tolerate. And I just, oh man, I'm just doing it. And then connecting to certain mobility positions, like handcuffs or rotation um, or um, combat stretch, 90-90. Like I was able to really get into the right position and have the kind of the calm, you know, connection well, that's the to thing it. about cannabis in general. I just feel like you pay attention more to like the little details of everything. Uh, and like, slows you down. Just yeah, it them. just kind of slows down and you're just like, Ooh, like you, you kind of feel your way through everything. What, have yeah. anyone paid attention to that market right now? It's been a while since I uh, looked at the business side of it. Like, where yeah, there's a lot of controversy right now with the California market because, um, obviously the promise was if we legalize it, we'll get rid of the black market. But that hasn't happened, and the 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 critique, which is justified, and I agree with, is that the taxes are so high yeah. that they yeah. make the black market a very viable market. So I think what we're dealing with now is they're looking at it, going, "Do we lower the taxes on this because we haven't solved the black market issue? Because it's such a disparity between the two that there's a lot of these dispensaries putting the good, you know, the good stuff out the back." Because they make so much more and yeah. they don't have to pay these like ridiculous taxes. I, I remember what the numbers were they showed, 
It was insane how well, much- Well, because you taxes. get hit multiple yeah. times. Yeah. So there's an additional tax besides your regular sales tax and state tax that you pay. There's like a third tax that you pay with, with marijuana. And I remember when we would get hit with it, it was like, when you total it all up, it's like, oh my God, there's no margins in this. And so- yeah. You, and then, then what ends up happening is a, a lot of these clubs they get savvy and they they do these price wars where they drop it down. And I remember, I vividly remember sitting down like doing the math, going like, "This can't be possible. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no way they're getting this for that price. Like, I know these growers. I know what it's costing them to get this. How can they sell it this way? Well, they they use it to get traffic into their place, and then they're backdooring stuff because that's where they're making all their real wow. money. At. So mm. they use that just to build their network. Right. right? I mean. In their defense, That's smart business. hustle, smart business. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if you put business people in a market, their job, their goal is to figure out how to work with within the rules of the market. Yeah. Right. And and what you have and in increase that increase profit in that uh, restraint. Yeah. So, and if you create the incentives that are so strong, um, I mean, it's uh, it's inevitable some people are going to do that. Yeah. The black market exists because the market can't compete with it. But if the market outcompetes the black market, it doesn't exist. For example. And it doesn't even have to outcompete it. It just needs to rival it enough to where it doesn't make sense. That's what I mean. It just needs to rival it enough where it's like, am I really going to well, take the risk of selling this on the street? I'll give you for an example. Extra buck? We're, we're old enough to remember when people were getting music for free, streaming it online. Yeah. It was a, everybody was getting free music online. Then Apple came out with a service for ninety nine cents. You could get a song, so it was, still wasn't free. But what mm -hmm. you got was clean song. There was no viruses on it. Sounded good. And do pe people still get free music, but that market has shrunk considerably. And you've got this huge now market where yeah. they can actually make well, money. Well, and then the next phase of that was like a Spotify who then yep. offers a service for you know for free that has commercials Correct. or for seven ninety nine or nine ninety whatever their service is. Right. And then you have access to incredibly, yeah. incredible yeah. They were forced to compete with that black market and they did. They did yeah. it effectively. But if you tax something so high that the cost of the product now is double, which is actually what these taxes do, they double the price. Yeah. The black market now is still viable, right? Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, uh, Big Pharma is getting out of control, man. What they do I, I have to talk about like the commercials we're being blasted with all the time now. And like, just I was in the hotel room with my kids, and uh, we were just watching like a regular show. It wasn't even like uh, on FX or something, you know, that's like you know adult driven kind of content. And uh, you know, first of all, we get like some pill for like people's sexual behaviors and increasing that or whatever and i'm like trying to like mute it at least but then <laughs> one came up for uh bent dick pill what yeah so it's a thing yeah and so they show like this carrot that's like bent and then they're like associating it and then we started dying there's laughing. a pill like, for a bent dick yes yes I it's called a genetic uh, thing zia flex or something <laughs> it, yeah uh, I had it written down there because I was like, dude, Doug, look this. They up. were they were talking about like yeah. uh, being able to have a more firm erection or whatever, and like not have this so like I know like you crazy can, bent. I dick. know you can break it, and there and there's something called prep preparism. I don't know how to say it, but it's where you can damage and because there's a natural curve to a lot of people or whatever. But this must be treating when people like damage it. I, and yeah, I have got no like idea. A, but it was like like a right hook why. Why? Why are we getting like an ad for this? Like, like I, you know that like the U.S. is like one of the only countries in the world that allows pharmaceutical companies to advertise. To like advertise. Is that true? Are we the only? Yeah. One of the only. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. We don't need any of this stuff and, to be advertised. And you know what's a joke about it? First of all, it makes people more self-conscious. So it's like, do you have the following symptoms? Sadness. Boredom, yeah. tired. Like, oh yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. that's me. Yeah, watch uh, out for the uh, wow. fiery diarrhea. Help reduce the bend. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's so, a new one for uh, me. Pyrion's disease. Pyrion's disease. That's a thing? Yeah. So you know what's going to happen? A lot of guys with a naturally curved penis, which by the way, some women- uh, Yeah, isn't that like an advantage uh, um, in some direction? Are going to get self-conscious This whole time, now. Doug thought that was normal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't judge my carrot. We call it banana syndrome. <laughs> uh, yeah. Doug hits it sideways. Yeah. That's how he's going to- Doug's like, no <laughs> shit. You can fix that, huh? Yeah. yeah if, Fix your bent dick. It's, wow. Uh, it's it, a thing now. And then you ever hear these commercials at, when they talk about the si possible side effects included? Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. You're like, wait a minute. Did he say like bleeding yeah. ass? Like, yeah. what the hell? Fix this yeah. one problem. Get 62 other problems. Yeah. No thanks, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, there is a real disease, though, that can cause some pretty excessive curvature. But oh, yeah. I, I didn't realize it was that big of a problem when they put a commercial on TV, though. Yeah. 
No, I didn't mean that. Or was that, it that on took the me a little by surprise, literally on TV, dude. Like okay. mainstream it probably TV. isn't that big of a problem, but it's got a, there's enough people that have a little bit of a hook in their dick that think that now that they might have to get this now. <laughs> so that's probably what's going on. Yeah. And from what I've read, a little bit of a curvature is a good thing. That's what I've heard. That's a rumor. That's what I've read. <laughs> let's let's get a, a poll for that. <laughs> a poll. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, real quick, you got to check out one of our partners, LMNT. They make an electrolyte powder that has the right amount of sodium. So you actually need more sodium than you think, especially if you work out hard and you don't eat a lot of processed foods. It helps a lot with the pump, muscle contractions, athletic performance. I like to combine it with creatine to improve the absorption of creatine. Anyhow, you can actually get a free sample pack from LMNT. So you don't even have to buy any. You could try it out for free. Go to mindpumppartners.com. Click on LMNT, pay for shipping and handling, and get a free sample pack of LMNT. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First caller is Andrea from California. Andrea, how's it going? How can we help you? Hi. Um, thanks for having me on. I've it. been listening to you guys for over five years now, and same with Dr. <laughs> Cabal. Yeah. So, so it was really cool um, seeing you guys connect and having him on the podcast and doing the hair tissue mineral mineral analysis. Um, so I recently got mine done kind of in the, almost the same week. So it was really cool hearing him evaluate your guys's. Um, so mine showed that I have a high level of stress. So my calcium magnesium was off the charts high. Um, and it showed that I was in a more of a catabolic state and, um, the they said the term I'm more in like the exhaustive stage. So um adrenals and thyroid aren't the best right now. And so I was kind of wanting your guys' advice of workouts or things to do so to um support where I'm at while I'm trying to get more testing done. Are you still running five days a week? Uh, this week I stopped. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's step so, one. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. the first, there's the first piece, of advice. first piece of advice. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> um, and it was really hard. So I ran this morning, but Monday, Tuesday, I did not So I'm trying to decrease, but I, I don't know. There's a lot of, just walk. So a little bit of background too. I was 200 pounds coming out of high school. And I lost 80 of it. Um, and I've kept it off for 10 years. So there's a part of me that's afraid of gaining it back. Okay. So walk, walk. I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to like all of a sudden go from run. I don't know how long, how long you run by the way before. It's not too much anymore. So well, what was, one to what? three miles, five days a week. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, and what is your, so your fear is you'll gain all the weight back. What is your, what is your worry about not addressing your exhaustion stage of health? Um, I just don't feel good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've know? been probably chronically under eating for a long time. And so I know I'm going to have to increase calories. Um, I, my hair has been brittle and I haven't had a cycle in years. Yeah. So, so here I, I'm going to, I'm not, I'm not trying to scare you, Andrea, uh, Andrea, sorry, but okay. the, the end result of the exhaustion stage is actually your fear of what's going to happen when you stop running. No. Okay. So <laughs> if you don't want to gain okay. the weight back, you got to take care of your health, not hammering your health until your body, uh, breaks down is what's going to end up happening. It's already starting to break down by, based off of what right. you're telling me. Right. So you got to address your health right now. That's that's number one. So I would stop running. You can okay. walk. MAPS anabolic, two foundational workouts a week, not three, would be ideal. Um, and I'm in the last phase. So should I run it again or? Yeah, I like MAPS anabolic. MAPS performance would be fine too. Um, uh, I was, know. okay. Performance would be good? Yeah, performance yeah. would work fine too. I've been to do that one. Yeah, okay. th that would work fine too. Um, if you don't have that one, we'll send it to you. But I wouldn't add any additional running at all. And I would slowly increase calories over time. Now, are you working with Dr. Cabral's team at the moment? Um, yes. So I have done, I did the HTMA testing and okay. I met with a health coach. And so after that call, I ordered the labs for hormone testing as mm -hmm. well as Candida because I have a lot of digestion issues too. Um, 
And so I sent those in on Monday and it's going to be two to three weeks. Okay. I would, I would work with his team on the nutrition aspect of it. They're, okay. they're yeah, they're going to be focused on your health and they're going to do a better job then my recommendations are going to be on this podcast because I don't have your tests. I'm not, I'm not able to work with you um, in person like they are, or should I say, you know, uh, more than just this phone call or this, this podcast. So yeah. I would, I would follow their advice with nutrition. Um, and I'd follow their advice when it comes to how much exercise you can throw at your body. Um, you know, off the top, I'd say definitely don't run. Maps performance could probably be good. I don't know if I'd have you do three foundational workouts though. Maps performance calls for three foundational yeah. workouts. I think two would be, two would be, would be plenty. Would be plenty. With the mobility sessions just as restorative movement yeah. for you to just, you know, stay busy. I know like part of it is idle hands and like just being uh, like not knowing what to do, but to actually have activity that's restorative. There's a way to do that. That's not super intensive and demanding. Um, that will actually help you recover faster. Yeah. One of the mistakes we tend sometimes make, or I should say sometimes, most of the time, is that we prioritize uh, things above our health. And what ends up happening is over time, our health suffers. And then whatever we prioritized above our health actually goes out the window too, right? So your fear yeah. is gaining the weight back. And so what you've done is you've compromised your health in order to maintain this weight loss but your health is starting to rebel, right? It's starting to go in the opposite direction. And at some point you'll lose your health and you're going to get all that, all that stuff that you feared coming back to the point where it's going to be far worse than it was before, because you're going to be in a really bad uh, situation. So you have to, you absolutely have to prioritize your health, no matter what your goal is, even if you don't care about your health and you just want to keep the weight off. What's your uh, sleep look like? <clears throat> like this. Um, six to eight hours. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, they're probably going to coach you to really focus on getting eight. Yeah. I would, that's what I'm going to assume. But since you're working with their team, they're really going to be able to help guide you in the right direction with that. They do a really good job. And then do you ever do anything like kind of restorative yoga or do you ever do walks? Like, are you ever doing anything that's like real low, mild intensity meditation, anything like that? Um, first thing in the morning, I always um, am reading my Bible and walking at the same time. Right. And so I'm already have that walking practice, but I, I kind of just started the this new protocol and kind of figuring it all out this week. Okay. So um, I don't have anything in place like that yet. I mean, that's good. That's a that's a good place to start. And then when you get into uh, performance, you're going to see you're going to have these mobility days. I, I think those uh -huh. will be, those, those will be great for you. It'll keep you moving. Uh, okay. but, it, but it's more restorative. Uh, yep. it's not, it's How not, long are they usually? What twenty minutes? You yeah, said 20, 20, 30 okay. minutes. Thirty minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You're on the right track, uh, Andrea. Do you have Maps Performance, by the way? Because we'll send that to you if you don't. I don't. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll shoot that over to you. And you're on the right track. And I get, listen, I totally understand your apprehensions. You're going to be changing directions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for 10 years, you've kept that weight off. And the fear is, oh, my God, it's going to come back because I'm changing things. Mm -hmm. But you are changing things in the right direction. And what's going to happen is you're going to be far better off than you are right now. You're in great You're not going to get worse. You're in great hands, too. What? You're in great hands too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Dr. Cabral Thank is one you. of the best. And I think I needed to hear that. I kind of knew that I needed to cut those things out and really focus on my health, but I don't know. Sometimes it's, you just need to hear it. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Well, there thanks for calling in. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right. Boy, how many people are out there that are so focused on the appearance aspect or the, f the insecurity fear, right? This was me yeah. for a long time. How many people are in that position and they compromise their health and then it gets to the point where they're, they're, they're forced. They're forced yeah. to, 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 to face the health issues because um, yeah, when that isn't working uh, anymore, yeah. it's actually going in completely opposite direction. That's a hard pill to swallow. You can only redline for so long yeah. uh, and then things start to break down. So Yeah. And, and, and I'm glad, you know, we're, we're leaving a lot of nutrition over, you know, because they're obviously taking care of that. I'd. You know, for me personally, like listening to that, being in a catabolic state, I was like, yeah, I've been cutting breakfast for so long. Like, I didn't <laughs> even realize, like, you, you just don't realize you get into these habits and, and uh, routines of, of things that are working for you at the time, but don't realize, you know, down the road, again, this isn't this isn't benefiting me anymore. My body's reacting accordingly. So okay. it's good to do these tests to really highlight those Yeah, things. it reminds me, it's like you're driving and then you get like a, one red light comes on the dash and you're like, ah, oh, it sounds okay. I'll keep going. And then yeah. another red light comes on the dash. Right. 
Uh, you know, you're listening. The idiot lights. It's like, yeah, yeah. you got to pay attention. And then you're listening. You're like, I hear a little knocking. Let's just turn up the radio. And then you keep going. You keep going. I'll wait for a couple more paychecks. Yeah. And eventually <laughs> it's just, ka, 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 you know? Like, yeah, exactly. You got to trash your car, dude. You know, you could have spent a thousand bucks. You got to spend 10,000. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Our next caller is John from New Jersey. John, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi, guys. How's it going? Good. Uh, I just want to say, first of all, thank you for uh, taking the time with me today. I really appreciate it. Been a listener since about. 2018. Uh, so it's kind of surreal being on this, but, uh, yeah. So thank you. Very cool. good. Right on. Uh, yeah. So kind of my question was, uh, about two years ago, uh, when COVID all started, I uh, went through a pretty aggressive cut. Um, and this was after kind of already seeing some small declines in the gym in general. Um, but, what happened was I kind of had a lot of trouble regaining my lean body mass after that. And as someone kind of who had always been going to the gym, uh, pretty frustrating for me. Uh, thankfully, actually kind of from listening to your podcast um, within the past couple of months, I decided to kind of check out my hormones uh, where I found out that my testosterone was really low, uh, like low 200s. Um, I ended up getting on TRT to help solve that. Um, this was of course, kind of after going through all of the, um, you know, uh, lifestyle steps, you know, good sleep, nutrition and whatnot. Um, so basically, uh, since then I kind of haven't seen what I was hoping for, at least, uh, in terms of physique improvements. Um, I know that to some extent, you know, it's not a miracle thing. Um, but still, you know, I've been kind of slowly reverse dieting, uh, training and not really seeing anything in the way of metabolism, body composition, uh, improvements. Um, so the one thing that I'm kind of debating is if this could be a result of overtraining for me, um, and kind of how I would go about fixing it. Um, just for reference, I do weight train about 45 minutes, like an hour, uh, six days a week, uh, get 10,000 steps. Um, so just a little bit of background. Where's the, where's the calories at right now? Like how, what's your what size? How, how big, how heavy are you? Give me some, give me some. Uh, so yeah, right now I'm five, six, about 127. And that's actually a bit up in weight from before I started TRT. Uh, like I said, I got to the point where I kind of leaned out way too much. Um, kind of where even like friends were like, Hey, like you don't look like, you know, the same kind of lifting guy you used to. Um, and then calorie wise, I'm only sitting around like, 2000 right now, um, where I feel like if I start to go over that, I start to notice my body putting on weight. Okay. John, what were your workouts like before TRT and, and what are they like after? Um, it's pretty much been the same. Um, you know, I've always been mostly, you know, lifting, um, you know, weight training, uh, never been doing kind of, you know, cardio junkie type of things. Um, and yeah, kept them pretty much, you know, in the same kind of time frame, um, leaning more towards like bodybuilding style. Um, but kind of from you guys learning to try and mix it up yeah, in do, terms of you know, sometimes strength and whatnot. What makes you feel like you're overtraining? Like, what, do you have any other signs? Are you, are you just getting sore, Super tired? Fatigued, yeah. Um, the reason I question it is not from like a soreness or fatigue thing. Um, I think again, uh, as someone that really, you know, enjoys the whole kind of, you know, process of getting in the gym, I've never felt like unmotivated. It just seems to be a lack of results. Okay. I would change your workout. Uh, yeah, definitely follow, follow a program. Yeah we'll, yeah. we'll put you on maps anabolic. Um, that one works really well for a lot of people. So I would change the programming and you're right with TRT. It's not a miracle. So I think a lot of times people think I'll get my testosterone up to, up to where it's supposed to be. And yes, you'll feel typically more energy, a little bit more drive, motivation. Um, you will build a little bit of muscle. You will burn a little bit more body fat, but it isn't, it isn't a miracle. So it's not going to fix things. I would, I would want anything for you. I would, I would, uh, you know, I'm not a nutritionist, so it's not my, my, but I would, I, if it was me, I would bump my calories a little bit. Um, because you're on TRT, one of the perks of being on TRT is you, you have this loud muscle building signal now 24 seven. So if you eat additional calories and you are following a good program like MAPS Anabolic, more than likely those additional calories are going to get partitioned over to building muscle. Part of why you may be stalling out 
is because you're just you're you're training six days a week and you're hitting it pretty intensely and you're not quite giving the body enough and maybe you have this little fear that you're going to start to put on a bunch of body fat and so every time you start to feed a little bit more you back right back off but maybe that's exactly what your body needs so I, I would look into increasing my calories a little bit uh, while also following anabolic and see what that does I, I I have a pretty good feeling if you do that you should start to see some st- strength gains relatively quick. Okay. Now, the one thing I would say is I think what's always kind of made me a little bit hesitant of uh, hopping on one of your programs is just because I'm someone that, you know, it's not just the physical aspect of it, but I really enjoy the mental thing of, you know, getting in the gym, you know, those six days and touching the weights. And I have kind of tried to go, do some go of those six, things. Go six say, days hey, you know, Go six days then. Go six days. The other three days, walk around, touch weights, and walk on the treadmill. I mean, you, you can do. You can like, go to the gym. You, yeah. you, you can even do this. There's, look, you could take the three foundational workouts, maps anabolic, cut them in half, so you have you know six if you want, or you could do the way it's laid out. Go to the gym, do your one of your trigger sessions, do some mobility work. Yeah, you know. I, so, so I mean, it's like I get the mental aspect. I'm the same way. There's other things yeah. you could do though. You don't you don't have to hit the body with bodybuilding workouts every single day, especially if it's not working you know, for more you. More isn't better. Always, if if you have an inclination that you might be overtrained at all, have you ever tried to do the opposite? Have you ever tried to eliminate a few days out of the week and see what that did to your body? You got to kind of experiment a bit. If if you know you're not getting results, you got to change it up. And and I I'm, I'm okay with the argument of the mental aspect because I totally I totally get that. And then still go to the gym. There's plenty of things you can do. Uh, that isn't, you know, stressing the body to try and, you know, build more muscle by lifting more heavy weights. Like it sounds like to me, you're overtraining by the amount of volume you're potentially doing and that, and, and, and not consuming enough calories. And by sending the right signal, by probably reducing the amount of volume, like a maps anabolic type of a program, uh, you're probably going to see your body start to respond. And if you need that consistency of, hey, I've built this routine of every day between this time, this time, that's my hour in the gym. Well, still go, bro. Yeah. Go, go walk, go stretch, go do the sauna, go swim, go, I mean, go do some other things. Body weight and rubber bands. I mean, yeah. it doesn't have to always be weights and intensity. Right. So there's there's plenty of things you could still go do at the gym that aren't going to be as taxing as going and, and hammering the weights six days a week. And it's because it sounds to me like that's probably the pro- part of the problem right now. Yeah. And, you know, again, because, you know, it is something I enjoy. I'm sure, you know, I know for a fact that there are days when, you know, I'll start to, you know, push a little more than I should. Um, so I do like the idea of the, you know, foundational and kind of splitting that up um, just relates to that is there any way you would recommend splitting the sessions like do's and don'ts in terms of, yeah, you might want to keep, um, you know, uh, you know, maybe, okay. Switch the arms portion to your, uh, day that wouldn't be foundational. Uh, or, I, oh, you know, the tabs. Oh, no, I think you're overcomplicating that. I would look at maps anabolic, the foundation day. I would, Pick half of the exercises I want to do one day. Pick the other half yeah. of another day. I don't overcomplicate it. Yeah, you can go. You can you can do like you know legs, chest, back, and then do shoulders and arms the next day. That's fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. All Thank right, you. Go. No problem. Right man. on. Yeah, it's it's always uh, frustrating because it's like um, I want to get better results, but I don't want to give. I don't want to change anything though. Actually, yeah, because yeah, I like what I'm doing. That makes it that makes it really tough, right? It's tough. Yeah, it's a tough one, especially when you yeah, like it's already an identity thing. Like I go to the gym this many times, and you know, to change that routine, no thanks. Yeah. Well, I so I, there's a part of me that gets the whole like because uh, I mean I like one, but I do different stuff. Yeah, right. So I mean, that, I, I got it. to that place where you know I was consistently going seven days a week, and I love that. I love that I had this like I was eating breakfast at the same time every day. I was eating, I was working out at the same time. I had the next meal at the same. I mean, I was so routine, and that was some of the, the greatest progress I'd ever seen mm-hmm. in my physique. Mm-hmm. But I'm also smart enough to know that if I'm going to the gym seven days a week, those seven days the intensity of training cannot look the same. There's yeah. just no way I won't. I will not continue to progress. And he said it himself. He's like, you know, he'll have a tendency to want to push it because you start, you feel good. You know, a lot of times just be, just because you feel good and okay, and you think you and because you can do it, Sal already says this. Just because you can do it doesn't mean it's optimal for you. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's where we make this mistake. Is like, well, I can do it. I'm going six yeah. days. I can lift the weights. I'm I'm able to do it. Feels good while I'm doing it. It's like, well, yeah, but it's not optimal for your body, especially if you are potentially underfeeding it too. 
So if he's underfeeding it and he's training with that high of volume, like yeah. you're you totally and that's and then I don't know what his programming looks like. I don't know his experience of what it looks like for him pairing exercises and his exercise selection or, or the volume. How, or right. how about this? I, we didn't even ask him this. How long have you been doing that same fucking routine? Yeah. You've been doing that same six day routine, the same muscle splits and the same exercises you love to do for the last six months to a year. Well, that that could be part of your reason why you're plateaued too. So yeah, follow follow something else for a little while. Back off the volume. Maybe increase the calories a tiny bit and see how your body responds. Yeah, and the other thing too is that people. I mean, I I would like to see his workouts because a lot of people will 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 optimize hormones exogenously, right? So have 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 a doctor give them testosterone, and then they work out harder, and then they add volume. Of course, and uh, it doesn't work that way, right? Yeah. And and if you were overtraining before and you go on hormones, that doesn't mean all of a sudden you stop overtraining. Right. You still probably need to back off and give yourself some time. He says he's only been on for four months. You know, uh, it takes a good yeah. eight months to a year before you even really start to feel the full effects. you got to allow your body it. to recover. That's where yeah. all the magic happens. That's People right. People always forget that. Our next caller is Mitchell from Ohio. What's up, Mitchell? How can we help you? Well, how's it going, guys? What's all up? Right, all right. Awesome. So I just want to say thank you for everything you guys have done through content, um, all the funny content and then also the articles, just everything. You guys have been great for the last, I mean, I've been listening for over five years. So yeah. Talk yeah. To you guys. Oh, gee. Yeah. So one thing also, I want to say congratulations to Sal on the new edition. Thank you know, you. Expecting. So that's, that's awesome. Good for you. Thank you. Big pop. Over. And then that kind of brings me to my question. So my wife and I are currently expecting a baby girl in September as well. And so I'm just trying to figure out how my programming should go once the baby comes, mm. especially with, you know, lack of sleep, um, still working, things like that. Um, I'm definitely going to want to keep lifting. Um, do I, should I focus more on body parts that are lagging? Should I do more mobility, um, nutrition, um, especially with your guys' background with, you know, personal training and also being fathers. I'm just trying to, just kind of curious what your guys' thought is. Yeah. Is this first kid? First kid, yep. Ah, congratulations, right. man. You're thank in for you, thank the, you. You're in for the, the most, most challenging, also <laughs> most awesome time. Yeah, well. fatherhood's amazing, bro. Uh, okay, so, so you know, the beauty of, of exercise is that, and this is a lot of people don't understand this, but this is really what's great about it, is you can mold it and shape it to the context of your life. Because really what it is, it's, a, it's an incredible tool to improve the quality of your life, regardless of the context of your life. So, so what does that mean? That means that when you're getting good sleep and you're not a lot of stress and your diet's really good, like you could go train hard, you could hit PRs, you could really push your body to the next level. It also means during periods of stress or lack of sleep or other priorities, you can use exercise as a way to de-stress, improve your health and kind of help you maintain yourself, help you, help you stay on track. But the workouts look very different uh, with those two situations. Okay. So how should you work out after you have a baby? Well, it really depends on what that looks like. Now, I, I have cousins who had a baby and the baby just recently, and their baby just goes right to sleep right away. They have no problems. Eight hours a night, super easy. They, they feed easily. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty that crazy. Never happens. That was yeah, super rare. That was not my <laughs> that's experience. That's a good example. <laughs> give him. Yeah. 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 I'm, all I I'm mean, saying, a better example is actually just to compare you and I, yeah. you and I are, are definitely on two different trains right now of training. Uh, and you, we both have kids that are young. So I think, I, I think that's your depends, uh, response is yes, it does depend. It also depends on your goals and how you said it at the beginning, right? Which I think is perfect. Sal is that, you know, Sal uses, I think training a little bit different than I use training. Like his, it's a, it's definitely, uh, his way of de-stressing of his way of staying balanced. Like you do not. And we, we knew this before he had a kid. Like you don't fuck with that time for him. Like we've structured work around him. We structure travel around his his workout schedule. That is that is a, a very important time for him keeping the rest of his world balanced. Um, I'm I'm a little less like that. I'm not like that. Um, I looked at it like, okay, I know I'm going to go into having this kid. It's going to probably dominate my life. So I'm going to try and get in the best shape I can heading into it. Because I understand that the amount of volume it takes for me to maintain what I have already built is much easier than for me to try and build. So I don't want to be in the process of trying to raise a kid for the first time and also thinking I'm going to be building, you know, and trying to build a physique. So I'm going to bust my ass while, I, while my wife is pregnant 
get myself in pretty damn good shape, build some good solid muscle mass for myself. That way I can give myself some flexibility when the kid comes. And that doesn't mean I I said, Hey, I I went from training five, six days a week, hitting it hard. And then she has the baby. And then all of a sudden I just go to zero or nothing or really low. It's like, I still wanted to kind of try and maintain that. But then when I had a sleepless night or I just wanted to be with Katrina and the baby all day long and do nothing, like I gave myself, I gave myself that flexibility to be okay to do that. And I knew that muscle wasn't just going to fall off my body or I was going to lose all my gains that I did for the last 15 years. And all I needed to do is make sure I get in the, got into my garage and lifted for an hour or two for the week. And I would stay in pretty good shape so long as I didn't allow the lack of sleep and stuff to fuck with the cravings, to fuck with the food that I started to eat. Because that's where, as I think as a dad, you got to be careful is if your volume of training reduces like crazy, you get a lack of sleep, which is inevitable is coming for you. And which also promotes these cravings. And then you go from the guy who was training five, six days a week, eating really good. And then now you're not training as, as consistently. You're not getting uh, good sleep. You're allowing the sleep to kick up the cravings like crazy. And now you're making all these bad food choices. And so now you're losing a little bit of muscle and you're piling on fat. That's where this can kind of get out of control. So I think that if, as long as you're mindful of what's going on with your consistency and your 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 eating habits to your training ratio, you, it's not as as crazy as I think some people make it out to be. You could train one or two days yeah. in the week and still maintain what you put on and what you built leading and, leading into it. And by the way, Mitchell, I choose to work out at six a.m. so I can do it, uh, and so that's just a priority for me. But it, it really depends on how it improves the quality and your workouts change. Yep. My workouts are harder when I get more sleep. Uh, they're not as hard when I don't get a lot. They're less volume. That's the point. The point is it's it's totally moldable. It's completely moldable and modifiable based off of how you feel and what's going on in your life. And you could literally be like, oh my God, I'm so tired. I got no sleep. I'm supposed to work out today. Uh, I think I'll just stretch. Yeah. How about you, TV? Just have that flexibility. But how about me? <laughs> yeah, how about you, TB? Yeah, dude. Tiny beer. Tiny Justin. beer. Yeah, because they used to be tiny <laughs> bitch. Somebody used to call me that. No, so no, I, they didn't. I don't like TB. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go with Tiny Beer. But uh, yeah, it, I mean, you guys kind of said everything I would have uh, recommended because it really it's just like uh, get it in while you can, man, and and realize that like you're gonna have to have flexibility, and there's gonna be a lot of of you, just check yourself in terms of. Uh, your stress bucket and, and in terms of like, you know, not getting sleep, obviously you're going to have to adjust the intensity and there's ways to, to, to do these workouts in a restorative manner. So I guess like figuring that out uh, right, you know, now about how you're going to approach that, I think would, would help, but, you know, relieve yourself of all that pressure of having to, you know, sort of progress or, or maintain really just like do it to feel better and, and, and go through that to, to, to build your body up. So you have that kind of stamina to, to carry yourself, uh, in, in an unzombie like state. That's another great point, Justin, because I, I found myself doing a lot of mobility. Uh, I've done I've done more mobility in the last couple of years than I probably have my my entire life. And so and part of that was giving myself that freedom of like, okay, I know I'm not being fed optimally. I know I'm not sleeping optimally. So I'm not going to go in there and hammer heavy, heavy squats and deadlifts right now. I'll do some mobility work because I can improve. There's there's areas I can improve on mobility. It's more restorative. It's not going to tax and stress my body the same. And I'm still moving. I'm still moving. And I'm still progressing in a, in a better direction of, of better overall movement and health. And so- yeah, just give yeah. yourself I like that symmetry for you know. I yeah. don't know if I was to like recommend a program that would be in one like you know during that start place. right now, right? Yeah, Mitchell, do you have a do you have a home gym or do you have equipment at home that you can have access? to? Yes, I actually just got a foldable squat rack for the oh, wall. Yeah. So well, there you go, dude. Oh yeah, that's a Aaron. yeah, that's great. Because then you you do it was so so I was just gonna make a recommendation, but I want to see if you have a home gym. You could go do like ten minute workouts throughout the day. Totally love yep. doing that. Yeah, so you know you're you're at home and you're like, oh, I got ten minutes. I'm gonna go do like two sets of you know bench press, and then you come back inside and oh, baby took a nap. I think I'll do twenty minutes of shoulders and arms, and you come back inside. Do a little power up. I did a lot of that with Max when when Max was just, when from his first zero to one was like a lot of <laughs> broken up workouts where I just got in there and got a few lifts. And it, again, it's okay. It's okay if you just did five sets of squats that day. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, remember, you don't have to do as much volume to maintain what you've built. So I would do my best to build a solid foundation going into having the baby. And then once the baby arrives, then have a little bit of flexibility. When's the due date? Perfect. 
September 15th. All right. You got a little bit of time. We'll send you map symmetry. Yeah. Get awesome. Appreciate yeah. it, guys. You got it, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Yep. Best of luck Thank to you, you man. Too. You got it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. You used to, someone used to call you tubby bitch. <laughs> no, this, uh, what? Uh, this is like way back in college. For real? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it was funny. It was like an endearing thing, right? Like, <laughs> endearing. Uh, I was a little tubby, dude. I was like, yeah, you're right. Like, yeah, well, when tubby. I said TB, like, I was TB. I meant tiny beard because yeah, I thought yeah. that was funny. Yeah, sorry, that just like took me back. You I know, know you were looking at me all sideways, like tubby bitch. I'm calling I'm like, you. Tubby. I haven't heard that in a long yeah, time. Yeah, it's all it was endearing. But when he said it, it's like he got like he went back to Nam for a second. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, you know. Backs. Yeah, it's it's listen, I went through uh God, I was like a two year period really challenging in my life. And I I worked out, but boy, do my workouts look different. It was not anything like they look now. It was like I went into the gym and I'm like, I gotta take this 45 minutes just to take care of myself. And it was like light and mobility and stretching and like five sets total yeah. of exercise. That's it. You can mold, you know, stopping completely. I mean, if you're really fried, that makes sense. But I always encourage people to do something because yeah. you still have to take care. Even if it means you, you take a break, healthy, for the, man. Yes, or just take a break for thirty minutes. Like, give me thirty minutes. I gotta, I gotta take a break, or Could, you know, fifteen minutes here and there. Some of the most walking I ever did was when Max was little too. Yeah, Katrina, yeah. Katrina and I put him in the stroller, and we go for hour, two hour walks while he slept or played. Like so, two birds, one scone. Yeah, right <laughs> yeah. Feed just, him. Yeah. You know, I just think that it, that's for Peter. I, I just yeah. think to, um, the the obviously, I think becoming the dad is the the most important part, right? Becoming a dad and, and being a support partner and father totally so that to me trumps my yeah. physique and my body like at the time and if i put on a little cup and that's the other thing too is like yeah, also having your, your partner relief yeah dude if, you, if i put on two or three percent body fat over the course of three months because i'm not <laughs> training as much or whatever Katrina's like i know you're 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 trying to take care of us right now but <laughs> <laughs> you're starting to look really fat. Uh, at you. Yeah. Yeah. You bitch. take some time for yourself <laughs> <Al>. <laughs> oh. our next caller is jordan from montana Jordan, what's happening? Hey, man. How's it going? Good. Good. Uh, just, uh, I've been watching you guys for a couple months now um, at like work. Outside? Or? Um, <laughs> I work in a mine underground, so I, I don't have Wi-Fi or anything, so I just record it and listen to you guys there. Oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. So my question is, um, well, I used to have a very physically demanding job. And now that I've gone to the mine, I'm operating equipment. And so I'm not very physical in my job as much as I used to be. So I'm not burning a ton of calories or anything like that. And so I'm gaining weight and now I'm getting, I'm almost 30. So I'm seeing some effects of aging, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I'd say and so I'm just wondering what I can do to compensate for my job and aging and stuff like that. <laughs> do, you, do you guys remember, do you guys remember the first time this happened to you? Like when you switched careers or in oh, that was starting to get more sedentary? Yeah. And, I mean, I remember when we did the podcast. Yeah. Oh, that was the first for you. Yeah. I mean, I was oh. always, I've been training and walking around. What about when you did the bank? That was only for a short period. Yeah, of eight I months. did some marketing job that sucked. Oh, I, see, I, I left right away. So I I'm like, say at thirty, just like him, was when I or twenty nine. So at twenty nine, I made the switch from being a trainer, a trainer who ran boot camps at six o'clock in the morning, worked 10, 12 hour days yeah, with clients, yeah. six days a week, to all of a sudden this guy who was sitting at a marijuana clinic with no cl like no clients, no nothing, like for like, at least the first six months when we were trying to build the business. So I went from that extreme to that extreme, like sitting on my ass all day long, and I was almost 30 years old. So I could totally relate to this. And this was, uh, if if uh, you've heard me potentially, I don't know, you just started listening. Uh, I went through a transformation process where uh, at 30 years old, I was in the worst shape of my life uh, because of this transition. Because what happened was I was still eating the exact same way I was eating when I was a personal trainer. And the difference in calorie burn was great. And it wasn't like I all of a sudden went to eat just eating horrible food. Like I literally just ate the same as I ate as a personal trainer, but I the, the amount of calorie burn was so dramatically different that I just kept gaining weight and gaining weight. And where it fucked me, I don't know where you are in your fitness journey or what your goals were, but I was always the skinny guy who couldn't put on weight and couldn't put on muscle. So I actually got like fucked a little bit because I was putting weight on and I was like, oh yeah, 
So for, <laughs> so first time I'm over 200 yeah. pounds, and then I was like 205, and then like it, literally I didn't think I didn't think I actually didn't think I was really fat. I just thought I was getting bigger. Just thick. And it, well, one day I'm so laying. You need on, honest friends. I'm la I'm laying on my <laughs> exactly. side, and this is the the story I've told before. Where I, I am I'm like laying in bed, and I, I go to scratch my side of my my belly now, and I felt a belly for the first time in my life. I thought, oh shit, <laughs> I'm not buff. <laughs> you know, I'm, so I get it, and a lot of that is just you you have to we 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 got to change the diet. Um, don't try and out burn it or outwork it through exercise. I think that's the mistake that a lot of people make. They're like, yeah. oh, okay, I had this sedentary job. Now I'm going to pick up, you know, intense running and crazy intense training to try and out burn it. It's yeah, like good luck. you need to you need to adjust uh, your diet yeah, accordingly. Cut, cut your calories and lift weights so you can still build muscle. So at least you could you know send that. You, you might actually build more muscle now. Yeah. Being, le you know, burning That's the positive less side. calories. So I would focus on building okay. muscle. What are, you, what are you mining, by the way? What are you guys mining over there? Is Bitcoin? Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I wish. No, it's uh, it's precious metals. Wow. So they got like palladium and gold and other oh. metals. Wow, that's oh. crazy. I've never seen that before. That's got to be really crazy. Do we get like a good deal if we go through you? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. We, oh. we, I don't think we've ever <laughs> hey, sold Doug, the maps sure, program sure you for get his uh, email, huh? Why don't you get his email? Yeah. One, Doug, Doug's a big precious metal one, guy. One gold coin. We'll give you a maps program. Uh, <laughs> no, you know, um, I would focus on lifting weights at least three days. Do you, do you have any maps programs, Jordan? Uh, I don't, no. All right, let me send you maps anabolic. So follow maps anabolic. That's a great muscle building, strength building program. Cut your calories, okay? Def especially on the okay. days you don't yeah. work out. You got to cut your calories and, and eat less. And hit your protein intake. So that would be the main thing I'd focus on. So hit, hit <laughs> for however many, how, how many pounds you weigh. So I don't know how much you weigh, but uh, hit that in grams of protein. Uh, and focus mainly on that, and trying to, and then after, and then cut back, restrict. A now, bit here's that. what's interesting: your body will actually adapt. Your body will actually start to, because it actually through the activity you did before, it actually started becoming more efficient. Now you're not doing as much activity. If you'll you you could build more muscle and actually end up with a similar calorie burn to what you did before. It's just going to take mm -hmm. some time. This is what happened to me. It's yeah. Exactly mm -hmm. what you're explaining is what eventually happened to me was. The positive side of being so sedentary was I could build muscle for the first time faster than I ever could. Yeah. Because it didn't require as uh, such a high calorie intake mm -hmm. to get to do that, which because I was so active yeah. for so And then so the more long. muscle will help you. Exactly. And then eventually what happened, the muscle started piling on, and then my metabolism started roaring again. And then before you knew it, I was back up and actually higher calories yeah. than I was as a young trainer and now with yeah. more muscle. So I mean, also too, just like obviously activity now, you got to be more intentional with it. Uh, that's something like going forward because you're not easily getting it. Uh, it's not like part of your, your job or your routine. So you have to be more thoughtful about how you get it in uh, whenever you can. So even like I used to bring a, a rubber band with me just in between, do some pull aparts, do something to just get some, uh, uh, you know, muscle contraction just so I can keep a, a small signal going uh, before my next workout. Yeah. How, how deep underground do you guys go, by the way? I'm fascinated. Well, so we take a train that goes three and a half miles into the side of a mountain. Oh, and wow. so the we're at the base of that is at 6,500 uh, above sea level. And it goes all the way. It goes up from there. It goes up to like 9,000 foot above sea level. So it's like layers inside of a mountain. It's pretty weird. Wow. <laughs> now, is it like what's is it hotter inside? I would imagine it's got to be a different um, temperature. Or? So it's. Yeah, it's like it's about 60, 65 degrees year round. So very that's pretty nice. So you can't like lift rocks while you're down there? No, not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I suppose you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> he does the machine. Yeah, lift rocks. Bro. Well, we'll we'll send you maps and a book. Yeah. I think that'll be a good program for you, yeah. Jordan. Follow that, cut your calories, and then allow your metabolism to speed back up speed back up. You will adapt. Your body will adapt. Doug, let's get some precious awesome. metals. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, yeah. Jordan. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. No problem. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I I refer to the study uh, on the Hadza tribe, uh, which is uh, they're modern hunter gatherers, and and they studied their metabolisms, and they didn't burn that many more calories, like right around the same amount of calories the average couch just potato. Super efficient. Your body starts to adapt, but in that adapt in that initial period, if you keep eating the same, you gain tons of body he, fat. But he, if he builds muscle, it'll it'll. He bounce. is literally describing what the transition that I I went through at the same age, mm -hmm. and you're describing exactly the process. What happened to me? Mm -hmm. was once I, first I had to figure the diet thing out, like, oh, I can't eat like this anymore. I had to cut back on that, yep. got back on training consistently. Then, But the positive side, what I noticed was like, oh, this is cool. I'm actually building muscle 
faster than I've ever built muscle before. And then before you knew it, the metabolism started to catch up. And then I was actually now eating those high calories again, but I had was able now to, I think mm. I had 10, 15 more pounds of muscle on me. Yeah. And this is really why we're trying to, you know, uh, promote building muscle as, as that insurance, right. To, to help with your metabolism in these like sedentary settings now yep. that, that we have. Excellent. Look, uh, if you like our information, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. We have tons and tons of free guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. You can find Adam on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal.